Today's Morning Coffee Vinyl Side Roger Williams, Songs of the Fabulous Century, Volume 1, Circa 1959 This 1959 UK pressing of Songs of the Fabulous Century was a two-record set originally released in 1958 before being officially split into two volumes in some markets. Roger Williams was a popular music piano instrumentalist who, like many young people of his age, fell afoul of the gatekeepers that lorded over the hallowed halls of the great classical music schools and institutions. Strict adherence to tradition and classicism, as it was defined by those in power, was required, as they considered all other forms of music as lesser. This not only included everything coming out of Tin Pan Alley and the Brill Building, but roots music and folk music, blues and jazz, and experimental and progressive forms of classical music as well. Players like Roger found themselves under the oppressive boot and watchful eye of their professors and administrators, and he was actually expelled from university for playing a piece of popular music in a practice room, something that was totally verboten at the time. He showed them, though, to a degree, going on to be one of the most sold and popular instrumentalists of his day, earning huge accolades and rewards, his earnings probably eclipsing the combined salaries and earnings of all the professors in the music department of his former school. Playing in a style we'd consider a fusion today, with classical, jazz, and popular elements, Roger played music for the people, the music people wanted to hear. He certainly could play, he had the chops, but busting tradition wasn't about turning away from classical music, it was about embracing more music, basically living a musical life. But that tradition wasn't just something that was part of the cultural ethos of the early 20th century, it still happens. The gatekeepers are still at the gates. You'll recall Julian Bream. The great classical guitarist was pushed out of music school for daring to bring a guitar to campus. Well, both myself and my podcast partner, Joelle, have our own stories about these gatekeepers that we've encountered when we were both pursuing classical music degrees. All stories for another time, though. But I'd like to draw your attention to today's short a snippet of Williams performing Blue Moon, and I'll also include the link to the full performance in the description. If you want to know what kind of player Roger was, and what he had in reserve, listen to Blue Moon and how it unfolds into ever-increasing stylistic variations, interpreting it through styles of some of the greatest players and composers of our time. His Bach styling is probably the easiest for folks to recognize as Bach-esque. But he does that through the whole piece. See if you can spot all the different treatments. Now today that kind of thing might be considered a bit of a parlor trick. Something one could knock off for a clever TikTok video or something. But back then it was something much more urgently political. At least as far as gatekeeping goes. Meant to reveal and disrupt. Blue Moon could be Bach, Beethoven, Chopin, who knew? Of course, I have my favorite parts, and some parts that interest me less. But I've heard enough to appreciate that Roger Williams was a fine musician with an obvious love of music and an ability to share and convey that love with others. That it's Blue Moon and not one of the approved piano concertos that he chooses to share this through doesn't matter. It's a beautiful melody. That's why Eric Clapton quotes it in the guitar solo on Cream's Sunshine of Your Love. It can be rock. It can be jazz. It can be Bach. That's the wonder and magic of music. <laughs> 